So, welcome everybody. I'm here with Dana Knott, who is a core faculty and online libra librarian. And she's gonna show us how to take advantage of some new library content, a new database called Films On Demand. All right, well, thank you, Bonnie. And please call me Dana, everyone, in case you're wondering. I am presenting to you today from Delaware, Ohio, which is just outside of Columbus and it's 65 degrees and the windows are open. And you know, feel free to ask any questions when they, they come up. Also, if you wanna put something in the chat, I know Bonnie will be keeping an eye on that, but yeah, feel free to interrupt or if I go too fast, I can definitely take time doing some of these things. And, and if you are able to, feel free to pull up a browser and if you want to start going through some of these things, as, as Bonnie had mentioned, she will be posting the, the slides in a PDF and there are links throughout the slides. So if you wanted more information about a certain aspect of this resource, then you can go back into the slides, click on the link, and it will take you to the help section offered for Films On Demand. So let me give you a little bit of background about what Films On Demand is. It is an online database that is focused just on streaming content. And a lot of that content will be educational videos, mainly documentaries as well. And if you are interested, you can find it by going through the library page, clicking on that A to Z databases list and you'll see films on demand listed. And what's great, we are very hungry to connect our students to various forms of learning, including streaming media. And especially in this time of the pandemic and a lot of people being moved online, this is a, a great resource to connect you to some great documentaries. But before we really dive into Films On Demand, I just wanna give a little bit of context as to how and why we have access to this resource. So Antioch Library is a member of a library consortium called OhioLink. And it's this library partnership of college and university libraries across the state of Ohio. And through OhioLink, we, we get a lot of different resources. And we also pay some of our own separately as the Antioch Library. But during COVID, uh, the governor of Ohio had set up an emergency education relief fund, part of the CARES Act, and they had given OhioLink a good chunk of money to offer some resources to instructors to kind of augment or enhance their online teaching. So a couple things with that. We do now have connection to permanent resources such as Sage Business Cases, but some of these other resources are temporary. And, and I'm sad to say that Films On Demand, currently we have access through May 31st, 2022. So I'm all about us using this as, as much as we can and Maybe if the library gods are good, this is something that can continue. It's not something we are sure as a library at Antioch, whether or not we would be able to purchase separately outside of our partnership. But seeing that we do have access, I'm all about using it. It's kind of like having that coupon that obligates you to go and use it. So, a couple different things with Films On Demand is that it's a, it's a source that you can immediately access through the A to Z databases by authenticating with the library, but it also gives you an opportunity to set up an account. But before I talk about that, let me just show you from the library page what we would be dealing with. So I'm in my A to Z list and I'll just click on films on demand. And here's our link. And you'll see that it has a lot of the content that 
is divided. So if you have an area that you want to jump right into, you can either click on the complete collection or be taken directly to your subject of interest. So we can see education, English, environmental science, history, music and dance, psychology, sociology. So there, there are a lot of different subjects that we have access to. So if I click on that films on demand, it's gonna ask me just to authenticate. Let's see if I can even remember my password. I only type it in how many times a day. Okay, so you can see that once you hop into films on demand that it will take you to our landing page. And it's just a nice little place to even browse. You can see that we have PBS, exclusive content. You can see some of the specific producers, BBC Learning, ABC News, et cetera. And then you'll also have popular documentaries. You'll have Ken Burns documentaries too. And so there are quite a few different ways to explore the content. And you can see that we have highlighted some of the areas of interest to Antioch here, environmental issues, psychology, political science. And you can also see that March is Women's History Month. And so it's highlighting that content as well. And you can even see there's some TED Talks in here too. So it gives you a wide variety of different things to, to search. So right now I'm just authenticating to this source with my AUE ID and my password, same as AU Direct. And I can pretty much just play around with things, get the information I need, share a link. But there are some advantages to setting up your own profile. And with that profile section, you would just click on that and then you could just sign up right here. And the reason for that is because you, you can do a lot of nice little features when you have an account. So some of those things would include creating your own playlist, setting up folders to organize some of your videos of interest, embedding quizzes into videos if you wanted to, and a whole lot of other things. You can customize your experience. You can default it so that videos automatically play, or you can set it to APA, all sorts of, of little things. So I always encourage people to go ahead and create the account. What's kind of unfortunate is that there isn't one primary account where we could have kind of as an umbrella. A lot of these vendors, in this case, this is an info-based project, really want us to create our own account. So let's see if I, again, I'm so terrible at password kind of stuff. Dana, just to confirm, you don't have to create an account if you want to use some of these videos and link to them in your course. Right. It's only if you want the advanced features that you would need to set up an account. Yes. So your Antioch if you, account gives you access to use and see the videos as do their students Antioch account, just the advanced features you can get if you create an additional account on their website. And wouldn't you know, okay, let's see, is it gonna do it? Let's do it. Oh, and just give me a second while I'm trying to log in. And you would think at this point, I would know how to do these things. All right. If not, I might just create a new one. Let's see. Raise your hand. If I don't know what I did. <laughs> I thought I typed, it's, it's probably bad typing on my part. And so you can see here, I finally got in. Oh, well, obviously I saved the wrong password. Okay, so once you create a profile, a couple things to consider. Uh, when you set it up, it will actually have you select a role and 
the role that you want to choose, of course, is teacher. And that will give you kind of that access to do kind of the cool things that you can do with films on demand. So I'm just going to click on my content area so you can get an idea of the different things that you can save while in your account. And so you can see under my content, I have quizzes that I've created. I've had have other media that I've created clips from. I've started create, uh, creating a playlist, a folder, another quiz, and then even a class folder. And I'll talk just very briefly about that. But uh, one thing when I was exploring this source with my library colleagues, Steve had asked me a very good question. What's the, what's the advantage of having a playlist over a folder? So you can see I've set up a folder just with a couple of Van Gogh videos. And I always see folders as just kind of a great place to put some of your favorites or things under consideration that you, know, you might, may or may not want to use in your class. Whereas if I go back to my content, a playlist is something that I can create specifically for my students to uh, go through different videos that might re relate to a weekly theme or a, a section in the class where you want students to get kind of an overall idea of a concept or concepts. So a couple things with this is you can play around with it a little bit and you can decide what works best for you in regard to customization. You know, again, you can see that you can have different settings and some of these settings do have to go with if you want to have a default size for your videos. Here we can see that if I want to default to APA, if I want my playlist. So kind of those other things, you will also see that I have caption settings and, and size. And you can also go ahead and just click start my videos with closed captions enabled. So that's always a good thing. With some of these things, like with other features, like with the dark theme, I think this is something that resets every time you're in it and then you log out and then it resets. But it depends on how you want your viewing experience. So I'm going to pause for a moment. Do I have any questions so far? And again, there'll be plenty of time for questions. From Sakai directly? Yeah, so you, <clears throat> you would be able to put, pull some of this content from Films On Demand and put it into Sakai, definitely. And so we're going to put the film into Sakai or a uh, URL? It, whatever you want. So you have the choice of either using the URL or just embedding the video in Sakai. So either one works. Okay. And so students don't have to re enter and say, I'm really a student at Antioch. Yeah. So with the, with the embedding, a, a lot of times if, if they're already signed in with that and then it's embedded in the course and they play it, it's fine. A lot of times with the link, they will be prompted to just sign in. It's, it's the same thing as if you put a link to an article in a database. So it, it's just saying, okay, yep, I'm privileged. I'm a subscriber to this resource and I get to have access. Yeah, it, it depends on your experience. Sometimes I think it's helpful to have both one embedded and then the link is just a backup but I'm a superstitious kind of person. Yeah, I am too. I don't know, um, Karen, Chris, I know is here and, and Bonnie, I don't know if you have an opinion, what would be better for the student experience if it should be a URL or an embedded video? I like an embedded video, uh, especially for short things. Um, and having the link available is also fine. Uh, I don't, like showing the text of the link with all the garbage gook of the long bits of characters, I want it to be the name of the video that is linked to the video. So I don't want I don't want them to see the URL. I want them to right. see the name of the video and click it. So 
um, but so both you, of us you did fine. that great lesson and showed us what it sounded like yeah. to somebody who has a reader when, oh, they, yeah. when you put the you put the actual URL in there. And I had just finished going to a meeting where someone said, you have to put the whole URL in there because people are afraid to link on something where they can't see every letter. I was like, ah! Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. clarity <laughs> is key. So yeah. let's talk for a moment about- I think just... Frank had a question. Frank, did you have a question? Oh, Frank, question? I, I did, but you answered it. Great. Psychic. <laughs> we anticipated your question, Frank. So let's talk a little bit about searching tips and locating your content. So a couple things to keep in mind. When you, when you type in a subject or a name to search, you're going to get a whole lot of content that comes back. And one thing you'll note is that the videos will come up as full videos or full titles or they might come up as different clips or what Films On Demand calls segments. Another thing that you should consider, the majority of videos I've noticed do have closed captioning. However, there might be some that do not have that at all. So we definitely want to make sure that we are providing that to our students. I liked a lot of times just to watch the video with the closed captioning and not the sound, it, just to focus on that, that text experience too. And of course you can also browse, but you know, just explore a little bit and see what's out there. And if something and, doesn't have closed captioning, you can advise students to watch it in Zoom and turn on the live transcript. I'm gonna enable it right now. Awesome. And you'll see that it's going to change the spoken word to text in subtitles at the bottom of your screen, which each person controls on their own screen. I just oh, turned them on to so awesome. available for everyone. But if you don't want them, you can now click on your live transcript button and you can hide the subtitles if you don't want to see them. And you'll also see that some of the videos have an interactive transcript and that is also searchable too. So I'm just gonna, I've just been using generically Van Gogh for a lot of these searches. And so you can see that I have an 356 results. And as I look at these results, you can see that some are identified as a segment. So this might be a point where you want to use some of those filters. So if I look here, there's a little more filters button. And under all formats, you can see that if I want to see the entire series, and there are a number of series in here, I can limit it to that. If I don't want to see all these clips and I just want full titles, I can click on that and then it updates it. So now I am seeing the full video right here. And Benedict Cumberbatch, any fans in the house? So a couple different things that we have going on. I have a preview button where I could look at a little bit of the contents. This share button we're gonna talk about in a moment. And then this add to button. So we can see that right away I have add to playlist and favorites. So I can click on that. And the first time that you are creating either a favorites or a playlist, you'll want to just create a new folder. I happen to already have my Van Gogh folder right here. You can also click to playlist. And the one thing about the playlist is you can decide whether you want your students just to watch a few segments. So I can choose different areas of exploration. Maybe I just want to focus on Van Gogh's ear mutilation because I, I'm obsessed with that whole story and add that to my existing playlist. So you have a number of different choices. For now, I'm just going to put it in my Van Gogh folder and, and save. So if I go to my content, you can see that there's my now my Van Gogh 
folder has gone to three items. And if I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, maybe I'm just going to delete that or delete a video. So you're able to, to change things. One thing, we're not going to go too in depth today about adding YouTube videos, but you do have that option if you, if you're creating a playlist and you want a YouTube video in that, that works as well. So once we get to kind of adding it, let's talk about getting content into Sakai. So you'll see that we have our share to button right here. If you're working with a student and you're like, hey, I think you ought to check out this video, you can directly email to the student. But those of us who want to add the content to our online course, we can just click on that embed link. So a couple different things to think about when I click on this. You'll see that this top one is the record URL. So this will take me to the entire video. Right now, I'm just in a segment. So I can just have it automatically go to that segment, or I can have it go to the video with all the segments listed. I can decide what size I would like. I just go with medium most of the time it, because students will be able to enlarge it in Sakai if they wanted to, they can do full screen. And then here is my embed code. Now the LTI, that's something more for like Bonnie and her crew would have to worry about because it's just like a, a feature for the course management system, depending on which one we have. So if I want to just embed, I would just go to my embed code there, copy that link, and then I can go ahead and open up Sakai. So, and which I should have done when I first came on. Okay, so if I pull up my Sakai, And I'm just going to go to just an old course shell of mine. So what I've done here is that I just have gone ahead and created just a little section of my course on course videos. And so you can see already I have some content in here and under actions, if I want to embed, usually I'll just uh, create an HTML page, but you know there are different ways that you can do these things. I'll then click on my source code and just depending if I'm using a Mac, I'll command V or control V if I am pasting from a PC. Yeah, Dana's done something special here where she's created a separate HTML page in her resources folder, and that's one way to go. But if you're already using lessons pages, I would encourage you to do the same thing on your lessons page, like in your readings and videos section. Yes, absolutely. You can yeah, I just did this just because I didn't fit. I'm lazy. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think most faculty don't know how to create an HTML page in their resources. Ah, so yeah. Using an existing lessons page or creating a new lessons page would be the best place for you guys to. Embed. Awesome. Awesome. And so one thing you'll see, regardless, uh, you can actually change the file name right here. You know, we'll just do Van Gogh art. You can add a little description if you wanted to. A couple things about you know, copyright or and streaming rights, you do have the right to stream this in your course. So if you had a, if you were meeting synchronously or asynchronously, you can show it no problem. And this is something that you can even show in the classroom without worrying that you need to have viewing rights for any of this. So then I'll just click, click on finish. So our and license I, to films on demand, just like our license to canopy through, mm -hmm. the, through the library, 
mean that the we do not have to pursue any other copyright mm -mm. Um, no uh, permissions yeah. they're not at all available to us to show in an educational environment yes and and you'll even see they have their little info base and and right away i can just go ahead and play the one thing i kind of don't like is that they give you little content warnings but you know quick question so there's my little video meg has a question i think meg what's your yeah. question um while you while you were in your source code <clears throat> i noticed something the other day doing source code for a youtube video that you can have it start at an x number of minutes so i had it started at 12 minutes i didn't yeah. know all the introductory stuff mm -hmm. where is that I, I don't know if you can go back to pages and oh yeah it, knowing that is like it's like so helpful because i do not need these kids to be watching an introduction sorry i can't keep calling my students no i i i hear you yeah you're yeah, definitely so speaking you my language with out, this. you can cut out the beginning baloney and just go right to this story. yeah and and what's great about that is you're allowed to do that with films on demand so uh you know one thing before i i show you that let me just remind you again you can you can use the the url and and same thing as bonnie said you can put it uh in your your lesson area mm -hmm. and as soon as they click on that link they'll be prompted to sign in to the library with their AUE ID and password. And you can even see there's our, our proxy information right here. So that way they're connecting as Antioch students and they do, again, they do not need a, a profile specific to Films on Demand, demand for that access. So a couple different things here. You can see that I have these different segments but let me go ahead and I'm gonna narrow that back down to full titles. And when I look at the full video here, if I click into it, you can see already that the video is divided up into different segments. So I can decide which parts of the video I might want to include or have my my students watch. And that's why creating a playlist could be very helpful too. Because again, if if I wanted to add and then create a playlist, I can just go ahead and click and add the different segments that I want as well. So that makes it very convenient. But you also have the option to create your own segments or clips. If you're like, nah, you know, I want to shorten this even more uh, to, you know, just as a brief introduction, or maybe I just want them to focus on this really profound statement that an intellectual says so that they can interpret. So I can go ahead and create a segment. So if I, click on this create a new segment you can see that this will open it up and what i can do is i can play my video and if i wanted just to set the time at the beginning i can do that and then i could play it and then select the end time and i should have played that to take it there let me do that for a second And you can see there's our live captioning too. So if I just set my end time there. And one other thing that I can do is set a thumbnail. So that way students can look at, okay, this is the little thumbnail, the content right here. Isn't that lovely? And I can give it a title a description, and then create it. So once you create a segment, it will automatically go into your content section under your profile. 
And you can see right now that here I have the little scissors, Dr. Henry, Henry Louis Gates. So if I click on that, this is one that I had created on my own from a much larger video. So you can see that there are still the full program and other aspects of this, but then I have my own segment too. And just looking at some of these other things, you can see there's the, the interactive transcripts. And any of this later on, if you find like, eh, I wanna get rid of some of this stuff, you can always edit and control your content area. But I found pretty much for, for playlists that I've been pretty happy with the, the segments that they already have that I can add to a playlist. So if you're curious about a playlist of, of different segments or videos, let me give it a moment while it looks at my existentialism playlist here. And I think I have it set where it automatically plays. So let me just pause that. And what I've done is I've just grabbed different clips from various videos like the exam in life and one on Sartre and, and just added them to the playlist. And you can see that you can edit it if you wanted to change the order of the videos in your playlist, you can definitely do that. You can put some notes and then here we can see that there's where I can kind of just move things around here, or I can just delete something as well. One thing that I think is really cool is that there's an even greater opportunity for customization. And if I click on intro, I actually have the ability to record myself a one to two minute video they suggest. And I can just use my iPhone for that or my smartphone, or I can just record something over Zoom. And then if I wanted to say some opening statements to my playlist, just to provide a little bit of context or say, hey, I want you to look at these kind of things while you're watching these clips, then you can upload that video and it will put your own video right before the playlist. One thing about that whole process is that it allows you only one video per playlist. So you do have that limitation with that, but it's kind of nice to add that little touch that, you know, again, you're adding some more presence and you're kind of, you know, giving some context as to why you are having them watch this type of content. So any questions about that? Okay. So if I go back to my content area and I guess I'll just grab one of my Van Gogh ones. One feature that you do have is to add a little bit of interactivity to your videos. And again, it, it really depends on whether or not you think it's, it would be effective for your teaching, or maybe it's just something that you want your students to think of. But there's actually an option where you can incorporate a quiz in your videos. And if we are in the video here, right next to the, the live transcript, you'll see that there is a quiz option. So you first just give your quiz a name. And then what you can do is start playing your video and then pause where you want to add a question. So I might just, uh, just do it right at the beginning. So when you pause in the video, you'll be able to add your question and then you can select what type. Multiple choice, you can have check all that apply, 
short answer, true, false. So if I do something like short answer, you know, like who was Van Gogh? You know, something basic like that. And then you also have the option where they can skip questions. And then, oops, it wants me to move my thing a little bit more there. There. And then I could just finish the quiz as well. A couple things that you want to do, if you're doing a multiple choice, you can decide if you want to show the correct answers. With the results to email, the students would have the option to kind of input that information. But I think it's sometimes helpful where you have instructions and you can say, please share the PDF of your quiz answers and upload it in Sakai under the assignment for th this video. You can do something like that too. And that way it's submitted. Not a, you're not getting a cluttered inbox. Instead, you have it in its nice little place connected to the grade book and things like that. So if I am a student and I start watching this video, first off I can click on share. If I wanna embed it in my class, you can see there's my link. And I might even just open it just in a, a new browser just to, so if we, Open it here where I'm not signed in. I'll just sign in here. It will have your student authenticate. And it's thinking. And it will take them right to the video with the quiz. You can see watch this video and answer one question and then your teacher note. And so you'll also see in the video where the question will pop up. And let's see if I can move this a little bit. And I think it's, it's making the student probably actually watch the video. So we'll speed it up a little bit on two time here. And then when it reaches that point, you'll see the question pop up. You can see there's my captioning too. So while we're waiting it, waiting for it to hit that question, do I have any questions for you about quizzes? No? And that's why I'm like, I should have put it 20 seconds in. But it's really up to you. Sometimes you might, you, you don't even really have to put a question. You can just put, hey, pay attention to this part here. Or we're going to talk about this segment in class. Later on, be expected to make a post about this. So Dana, yeah, so, the, yes. the value I think I'm really seeing is that these are high quality documentary videos that we can trust the content in. Um, they, you can give the full length video or you can give the pre-segmented videos just so they have to watch, they can just watch small portions that you want them to watch. And we can create playlists and embed these things in our Sakai site and some extra bonus features with right. quizzes, custom cuts, and you know things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is a, a curated collection. The one thing that we want to pay attention to, of course, is that you know there are various views about different topics and, and things like that. For like this one example, I can I can see that you know they talked about Vincent giving his ear to a prostitute, but history has shown that she was actually a cleaning lady at the brothel and not a prostitute. So sometimes you'll have the little details. So you can see we finally hit that part where the question pops up and then they can put in their answer and then they could submit it. And then 
when you get to the end of it, then the student has the ability. And so you can submit it this way as well. This is really great, Dana, because also it's all content. What, 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 I just spent two days at the National Museum of Art trying to get Spanish art from the 1500s through 1700s to actually more or less decorate my course. I mean, I'm not, we're not doing, I'm not doing an art course, but what were people thinking about? What were they seeing? What was the visual in their world? Right. You can't yeah. believe how much baloney is in the, 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 the so-called, um, uh, they call them documentaries, but they're just a talking head like me, blah, 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 about how Vince Van Gogh is this and Vince Van Gogh is that and Vince, I don't want to know, I want to see the pictures. Yeah, so I mean. Work to get the paintings. And you know, depending, some of them have some, sometimes I've really found, especially when you have reenactments that they can be a little bit cheesy. So sometimes you you can just you know make sure that yeah they're they're interesting for your students and that your students will find value. So other things that I can kind of mention with another feature that they have films on demand. If you would like to have films on demand on your smartphone you can download the app for Android or for Apple devices. And I, I've tried it and I was finally able to log in because I'm always an idiot with my passwords. And, and it works quite nicely where you just sign in with your profile account. So you would need to have a profile account created in order to sign into the app. And you can just go ahead and watch films from your phone. One thing that we can kind of consider is that sometimes students are limited to engaging in content from their phone. So this is just a, another way to access the, the content from your mobile device. There's also a, a Chrome extension, but I haven't had much exploration of that. But, this is just kind of in a nutshell. There are so many other things that you can do. Like you can even set up a course content area where you can invite your students. So that way everyone is kind of communicating and accessing that content. I don't know if I'm sold on any need for it yet, seeing that we can easily just integrate materials into Sakai but it's out there. I do want to mention that Bonnie will again be uploading the slides for this and the slides do have links for different areas. So if you, you want to go through and you know, review how to add an intro video to your playlist, then you can go ahead and, and click on that and it will take you right to that help page as well. And yeah, I think I agree with you. Uh, it would be great to, if we had an ongoing contract with them, we've got a year and a couple of months uh, worth of guaranteed access um, that we that we use that access. And if uh, we want to develop some of those deeper, uh, you know, linking to course content and things like that, if there's yeah. a value and it's not too difficult for students to get to, um, that we, we might try that later, but I, I'm really excited about this as a, some yeah, new yeah, content and, for our faculty. And I haven't found the, like you said, yet, Bonnie, the value in it. And especially it, this is a source that might go away in a, in a little over a year, then, you know, use it as much as we can and get our value from it. Any questions? I know this is kind of Films on demand in a nutshell. Susan, I think. Susan. You're muted. You're still muted, Susan. Okay, when you're setting up your profile, mm -hmm. uh, are you creating a new one or do you have to use your Antioch address? You, you know, you don't need to include your Antioch 
address okay. because you, if you prefer to use like a different Gmail account or things like that, you can go ahead and do that. It, you know, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't send you an email for you to like click on or anything like that. You pretty okay. much just add, add it and then save it. And it doesn't have to be that, that address at all. Exactly. Okay, and I think it's just because you're already, they know that, okay, this person was able to authenticate into films on demand. So they're an authorized user. Thank you. Yeah. And you'll see anytime I'll click on that films on demand link, I will sign in with my AUE ID and password, and then I'll sign into my profile. Ellen, did you have a question? I saw your audio light up. No, no question. Okay. I'm not sure what, I probably just bumped it. Yeah, it was just a background noise or something. That's okay, I wanted to make sure. Does anybody wanna see the steps of uh, grabbing the embed code and embedding it on your Sakai page again? Do you wanna, are you able, are you signed in or? Yeah, do you want to, I would say, yeah, go ahead and show, give them a better view. Okay. So I would especially I'm gonna like knowing where the spot is in the embed code that tells the embed to not start at the beginning. That, yeah, Meg, that. that was particular to your YouTube channel and uh -huh. we can customize the embed code. I checked the embed code from Films on Demand. It doesn't have that in there, but I think we could work on adding it. Okay. You, if, you if we can add it, yeah, in yeah. your profile. So if you're going under like your settings, you can set it so that the video automatically plays. So you do have that option. Okay, I just and so, was so when I played my, when I went in my playlist, you can see that it was already set up to automatically play but I can turn that off too. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys can see my screen and I just found this video on Films On Demand. Uh, I click the share button down here at the bottom and it pops up. I choose to copy the embed code, which is just a long snippet of code. And now I pop over to my Sakai class and I'm in a lesson on week five. And uh, I'll just cancel this one and reopen it. Um, so you'll see if I wanted to place it here down with my videos or wherever, all I need to do is add a new text block section or I could add it to an existing text block. Mm -hmm. I go to my source code and I just paste in that code that they gave me that embed code. You can do this with any embed code from any video. For example, if you put a video in Google Drive, Google Drive will allow you to copy the embed code. TEDx will allow you to copy the embed code. And, um, it's really, it's easier to embed Vimeo and YouTube videos because all you need is the link, but any video service that will give you an embed code HTML, you can just plunk it into the source area. And you'll see when you leave the source area, you won't get the actual video, but you'll get a white frame that's where the video is going to go. And when you hit save, it'll then appear on your page. And it'll just take a second to load. And their embed code includes the video with a little heading at the top, their info based copyright at the bottom, and it's got a slightly uh, long white tail here, but a student can just kick play and open it. They can go full screen with this button. Um, and then that that's a casting button, but they can turn on their closed captions and choose English. They can change the speed and they can just go to auto settings and just play it right from your Sakai page. I know some people have to run. Thank you so much for attending and Folks, if you have questions, you can always reach out to me. And Bonnie is the expert when it comes to putting this content into Sakai. So 
Yeah. So if you need help with doing that the first time, just shoot me an email and I'll help you embed your first video on your site and, and we'll get you some practice. I will probably also make a short video of just how to grab an embed code from various sources and how to paste it in uh, Sakai lessons pages so that there's a short version. And then when you want all the details about info on demand, you can also watch this whole long video or parts of this video. That's great. I have a quick question for Dana. Yes. Go ahead, Wendy. Hi, Dana. It's Wendy. Um, hi, Wendy. So are you saying that my students should create their own profile? Mm, they don't need to. They don't need to. So the only thing that would happen with them is like when when they click on your videos, like your Mayan videos, yeah. they'll, ju they'll just need to sign in with their, through the library, authenticate through the library. So it, it, they would just immediately be prompted to type in their AUE ID and password. So if you notice, like when I copied the, the quiz link into Firefox, I had it immediately prompted me to sign in. And so that's what your students will be prompted to do. Just like if you had a link to an article in a database, they would click on that link and again, just sign in with their their AUE ID and password, but they don't need to create an account. If they wanted okay. to watch things on their phone, if they wanted to download the mobile app, they would need an account for that. Okay. But anything, okay. anything like that you post in your class, they can just access it and they can even just go to the library site, click into films on demand if they just wanted to find some videos. All righty, thank you. Good question. Any other questions? And again, if, if things pop up, feel free to, to reach out. And you know, we can always Zoom, we can that way and go through it together too. Do you know how many films are in this collection? Oh, there are thousands. There, there are thousands of films. I mean, the other day we were just exploring how many psychology films there were. And there was like 3,000 of those, yeah. So there, well, I there's- I put in statistics and there was 2,600 just for statistics. Wow, yeah. wow. It must be big. It, yeah, yeah, it, which is, you know, yeah. I, that's why I, I like having that access, but it does make you wonder uh, how much this would cost separately too, but- Yeah, I pulled up the library's A to Z database page and I went down to Films on Demand and look at all the subjects that they have broken out so you can narrow by subject area first um and it'll bring you into just a section that you want right so engineering and, English, and you geography. can do that in at films on demand you can also select the subject with within the site too yeah so either way yeah it's yeah we can see that they have 36,000 titles they're mentioning and probably mm -hmm. growing. Yeah. You know, I love having access to information, but it's also maddening at how expensive information is too. But I hope in the time that we have it, that y'all use it for business or pleasure, you know, enjoy it while it lasts. And any other questions, but if there aren't any, thank you so much for attending and learning about this. And, you know, we're always open at the library to feedback, suggestions, you name it. But I really appreciate your time. I know every, everyone's really busy.